This week, we're talking smells, pongs, effluent and sewage. Join me and find out how to make it. So much as I love to start with the wee world, I'm going to be really honest, I couldn't find many photos when I looked at my collections of things that are yucky and sewagey and effluenty. And I think it's because I live in an age where things have been cleared up a lot. So here's a clear photo of some pipes coming in and you just have to use your imagination as to the gunk and horror that would have been an effluent or sewage discharge pipe before all our current laws thankfully came in and cleaned them up. So this is my O-scale diorama. It's a um, nice little weir. We've still got to do the froth at the bottom and we'll do that in a future week. If you're wondering what these funny colours are down here, so my experiments with doing oil slicks, quite crack that one yet but I'm still working on it so if anyone knows a good way to do an oil slick you know that lovely iridescent sheen that you get on the top of the water please let me know because it's stumping me at the moment so I, I did actually try doing the um, resin for the culvert which is going to have a bit of a stream of effluent going downstream and unfortunately you can probably just see it it just went downstream and I ended up with a small amount here so the moral of the story is, and what we'll do when we do it now, is we'll put the resin in for the effluent to go into the river. We'll let it set quite a long way and then we'll pour the final bit when it's not going to mix through too much. So the plan is to put a pipe in here, have a stream of water coming out. Now I'm going to use fishing line for this because I find it a very simple thing to use and I've got it in the house. You can just use an acetate as well if you want a bigger pipe. I want quite a thin, narrow bit of... Um, water streaming out of the pipe. So what am I going to use for my pipe? Well, this is a straw. You really can't beat a straw. Um, they, use, they come in a number of sizes. It's probably the thickest you'll find. If you're doing a smaller scale, N or HO, um, you might want to go with this. This is just a black cocktail straw and they're a bit shorter and they're a bit narrower and a bit more in scale. So I'm going to take this straw and I'm going to have to just um, put this in here. So the first thing I need to do is make a hole for my straw. So I'm just going to cut out, I'm going to feed a bit more back around the bank. Now I want it to be fairly high up because I want it to, um, oops, here we go. I want to bed it into here but I also want it to have a bit of a stream of water. So I don't want it to be too low down and it needs to go in enough into the bank so that it looks like it's bedded in. Oops. So this is the one downside with having a dam on, is all my bits stick in. So there we go. Get those out. I'll pull all those out in a minute. Is that big enough yet? No. I'm just going to keep carving this out until I can get my straw in. This is sculptor mold, so it's very easy to carve. Um, if you're sensible enough to know what you're doing before you start planning your diorama, then you probably would have carved a hole or bedded this in at the beginning and that would be the better way. So there we go, let's see if that's just a little bit bigger. I'll turn it upside down in a minute and get all those out. How are we doing? Oh, I still need a bit on this corner. And now you can see I'm getting down to the blue foam. Okay, so there I've got my pipe. So I'm just going to turn this upside down so I can oops, clean water again. And now what I need to do before I, um, I get any further is I need to paint my straw black. I need to decide whether it's a metal pipe or concrete pipe. To my mind, this should probably be more of a, a metal pipe because it's, well, it's thin. But if you want a concrete, you would need a sort of thicker wall, because concretes have thicker wall pipes generally, and you can buy some of those straight from the, um, as a, a sort of model kit part. Okay, so I'm just going to put some um, flat black, I've got two Tamiya's here, but one's black and one's flat black, and you could spray this with a spray paint and it would probably be a, a good idea, because um, it's quite, um, quite plasticky, but I'm just going to fix all this so that any gaps don't really show. Eventually we'll have some lovely vegetation around here, so I'm not too worried about 
put it in at the moment, but I don't want to get to the end of the pipe and see white because that's not going to happen in real life. Okay, there we go. And um, I'm just going to do a, a black on here. And because I want it to look a little bit worn, I'm going to take just a little splodge of, um, this is brown to me, it's a metal pipe being eaten away, I don't want it too eaten away. So just while it's damp, I'm just going to mix a bit of this in as well um, to give it a bit of a, a texture of um, sort of rust, other things, just as you might get on a pipe. I've not gone for the really bright look because, um, well, quite frankly, I don't want to. And the inside as well. It definitely would have a lot of water sat there. Because it's wet, it all just joins in nicely. Um, gives it a bit of texture and a bit of interest. There we go. So the first thing I'm going to do on my culvert is pour some magic water that I've mixed up. And it's got a bit of brown tint in. Actually, it's just a couple of Tamiya colours, a brown and a green, because I think water has a little bit of green in it normally. And what I want to do is put the bulk of it, but not all of it in, and it should match this colour. And I want it to, um, I want to be able to put a stream coming down here of effluent and the gunk out the um, pipe, and I want it to be a slightly different colour. So I'm going to pour it all in, leave it to set for quite a while, because I find magic water does not set um, in, a, in um, 24 hours. So what I'll probably do is, it's now 3 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, I'll probably pour it and then tomorrow morning, maybe 11 o'clock after church, I'll come back in and I'll put in the next little swirl of effluent going down and I'll do it with a slightly greyer colour. So hopefully it won't set before then, we'll be doing another layer. So I'm just going to pour as much as I can whilst leaving a little smidgen left in the pot for tomorrow. Cover up all my failed oil slick experiments. And this will just flow as you'd expect into the edges. I'm not going to need a lot for the effluent, it is going to be a thin stream, I don't want to overdo the effect. I haven't quite got into that corner yet, there we go. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to stop there, so I've, I've got a little bit more than I need really. I'm not planning on needing half that amount tomorrow, but it'll be easier. I'll probably mix the colour in um, now so I don't forget it. And I'm just going to do that degassing thing where you breathe on it. This is to get rid of any bubbles. And actually, I don't find you get a lot of bubbles with magic water. I find it's really good for that. So two breaths and it's done, really. So doesn't seem to be any more bubbles in it. I'm just going to leave it now and I'm just going to put the extra colour in to this Envirotex. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to put it out the way actually. And I'm just going to add a bit of grey and I can use this as the test and if it's looking quite solid later, it's very solid looking grey. Um, let's just have a bit of a, I don't think I could, uh, no, it's going to get a nice gunky yucky colour as if it's come straight out of um, some distant plant or something without being treated. Mm, there we go. So it's going to stay on the side and when it's looking thick enough and I know that when I leave these two they won't mix into each other, which is what happened the last time I tried my first layer. So there we go, you live and learn. What do I actually think on Envirotex Light, which is slightly thicker? So on Envirotex Light rather than Magic Water, I would suggest you you don't leave it that long. Maybe a little bit, but not that long, because it is thicker to start with and it sets much more quickly. And you don't want to be pouring this on and leaving it on the surface. It does need to sink in and go level. So there we go. It's going to stay on the side for a while. 
Okay, well, I gotta say, this is a little bit thicker than I would have perhaps liked it. It will go flat still though, because magic water will stay runny for quite a long time, but it's half eight on a Sunday morning. I couldn't have done it four hours earlier because, hey, I'm not getting up at half four. So what I'm gonna do now is I need to check where my fitting line's gonna splash into so I can put this in the right place in the water. So I'm gonna take my straw and I'm just gonna cut it very simply, Oop, just gonna cut it. And that is my pipe. And I'm gonna put that in place in here in a second. But before I do that, I'm just gonna glue in the um, fishing line. So this is my fishing line. And it's probably gonna to need to come out and go down about there. So just cut that to about the right length. And it needs to be quite curved. Um, so let's just keep curving that. It won't, um, it won't stay in place until we, we glue it. So I'm not gonna put it in place now. I'll glue this, um, but I want it just for, maybe it would if the resin's particularly tacky, but I wouldn't like to think it would. So tacky glue is normal, just a thick white glue. That might be a tad much, so let's just smear it around the outside. The end's gonna have quite a bit of vegetation around it. Um, so I would rather it glued well and looked straight. <coughs> I didn't have enough glue. So here's my fishing line. Let's just see. So where's that gonna come out to? Probably mm, if it, in a nice curve. I'd say probably about there. So let's put a little mark. That's what it's going to go to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, which is quite sticky, and I'm going to just put it along with a nice downward stream. I'll do a few more bits of this in a sec. As I say, I would have preferred it to be a little bit thinner. Okay. Let's try that again with a bit more. See if I can get it to, ooh, treacle. I actually wonder whether this might be thick enough to stay on the um It still self-levels at this point, so it's not an issue. And I want it to tail out, so it getting thin is not really an issue either. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we'll stir it in again in a sec, because that looks really funny. You probably can't see the end because of the dam. So now I've got a little knot shape in there. So let's just... Um, Okay, I think that's probably enough. So what I would do is I would put this just where that's gonna come down, and give a little splash, and then we'll just we'll tease it along. Don't worry, it does all just flatten out. And we'll just make this a little bit more um, less streaky and a bit more um, sort of mixed into the water. What I am going to do, which I wasn't originally, but this is oops, this is quite um, a lot thicker than it has been sometimes, is I'm going to glue this in. Normally I'd use super glue, cyanoacrylic, and I'd glue both ends and it would keep it solid. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put this in this end and this end and hopefully it, the, the pressure won't pop it out to do anything too stupid. So we'll have a go. 
I want that in there and I want it in there. Now, the problem I've got is that quite where I want it. The answer is actually that's not bad. So now what I'm going to do, which I wasn't planning on doing straight away, is I'm going to put some of this in here and I'm probably, oops, gets a bit stringy. Ooh, it's very stringy. I probably would have used the same colours in acrylic gloss medium and mixed up a batch. But actually, because this is looking so good, I'm going to be very subtle. But this isn't set yet, so let's just... Uh, yeah, that's what I was worried would happen. So... There we go, just put some of that on there. We'll see what happens. Right, so, mm. yep, getting it everywhere. Looks incredibly messy. So let's just um, tease that into place again. So I want that to be back here, this to be up around there. And my problem is this has moved. So let's just put that there and this here. I do talk to myself a lot, don't worry, it's not contagious. There we go. Just lining it up from this angle with the pond. So that's doing that. Um, I will be using acrylic gloss medium for the bulk of it because it is much easier when it's all set up to, to do the final water. But as I look at it now and it's all lined up and I look at it and I just think, hmm, totally. That's in the middle of there. It looks good. But the good news from having done that is I do think it needs a bit more um, around the splash area. So I'm just going to take my knife into my own hands and dribble a bit more of this in just about there. Mm-hmm. Right, before you think it looks awful, the um, it settles out in quite a nice way, so I'm not too fussed. What I just want to do is make sure that I don't... get this anywhere else. A little bit of it actually doesn't show, because it's quite fine. Right. <laughs> there we go. Right, I'm just going to let that settle for a second or two. And see what happens to it. You can see how it's kind of got this treacly look to it and it does just set back up. It's still at the stage where it's self-leveling. Whatever you do to it, it will still level back down, which makes it much easier to use. So I've got a few bubbles in there. I'm actually not bothered if there's any bubbles in the um, um, it coming up, but I suspect they will come out and pop over the next... But they're past the stage where you can blow and they'll come up because it's not quite liquid enough. So then I end up with a few bubbles. We might put a bit of froth on there anyway. And um, you can see what it's looking like. Now, if you don't like the way it looks, bear in mind you will be putting some acrylic gloss medium and that will just soften the edges because it will blur it slightly. It's like putting it over here. It creates a, an effect over the top. And as a result, you will end up with um, it being softened and smoothed and you know any harsh lines will disappear. So my effluent pipe, um, the resin's all dried, thankfully. It's a little bit dusty. And I've taken my um, dam that I had off. It was just a little bit of cling film and foam board. And I'll trim all this down along the edges just so that it looks a little bit neater. And I just do that with a knife. Um, it's, it's just to, um, to get rid of that sort of meniscus effect that you get if you're not careful. And... Um, I'm going to come up to these with waves in a minute, so I don't need it to be perfect. And I, I will eventually put a, a facial on these. I never like to leave them with the, the blue foam. So that's the one advantage of magic water is it is very easy to 
cut and manipulate after the fact. So here we go. And you can quite clearly see that the mucky water that I put in and trailed is got loads of bubbles in it because it was very thick when I put it in so it didn't degas properly. And normally I breathe all over this and stop it. But in this instance, I didn't really because it was thicker. A lot of dust on this. I've been living life in the kitchen, obviously. And this is now in need of the um, pipe building up a bit. It looks a little bit, I mean, it's spurting in the right direction, but it, it's just not that exciting yet. It needs a bit more strength to it. So we've got that in, and um, what I'm gonna do is take a gloss medium. Now, I've just got a bog standard hobby craft acrylic gloss medium. Now, you can easily put in um, something like this. It's an impasto gel gloss by Dale Rowney. Any gloss medium gel will work. I like this one because it tends to, I find, dry a little bit clearer than the other one. It's not that they don't dry clear. That one, if you put a thick glob on, I find the centre of the glob stays white for longer. So I find this one dries off more quickly. Now, this isn't as dirty as it could be, obviously. Um, and it does take a while to build up. So what I'm going to do first is just build up a bit of um, bit on it, just of gunk, and then we'll just smooth it into a water shape. And then at the same time, we want it to be landing, don't we? So. Make sure you look at it from all angles because what you don't want is a weird water shape because water is fairly streamlined. It doesn't make, um, there's a bit of a bump from the, the resin there which I want to just fill in really. And water will start off a little bit tighter and spread slightly as it fans out. So that's what the effect that I'm after. And then what I'm going to do is just show this sort of streaming downstream. Now, I can easily um, show the, the sort of disturbed water for a while, but after that, it will just merge into the normal water that you would have around. So what are we going to do here? I'm actually going to do next week, I'm going to do all the froth round here. So for now, I'm not going to go any further up than just putting a little bit here. And I don't want too much on. This isn't a hugely wavy river. And I'm going to look at waves in a, in a future week when I do my, my next section of my ocean. But for now, I'm just, uh, I'm just going to show the representation. And up here, I did it very much with a, a brush, just dabbing on. I'm trying not to create any bubbles. And you just want to show that it's not smooth, the, the water top. You don't want it to um, look like a mill pond. Now, you can go out of your way and make some really amazing wave shapes. And by all means, do. And we might well go over this with a second layer when I do the waterfall base. But for now, it's just enough to show there are ripples. And you can do it with a palette knife. Certainly for the ocean or a sea or a big body of water, palette knife gives you a nice sort of, sort of wave rather than a ripple. But I'm after ripples on this river. So I'm just rippling and waffling at the same time. Now, do if you, don't, if you haven't done waves before and you're a little unsure, go and take photos of a local river. Go look at it. Work out what happens with the waves. Which way are they flowing? How does it all tie together? Um, I want this to have sort of died down a bit in obviousness by the time it gets this far down. And also I probably would be turning this, if it weren't for the video, a little bit more to, um, to get the waves in different directions. Um, unfortunately that doesn't really work for a video, so... Instead I've got a very cat-handed um, approach. And I'm going a little bit more at the bank than I probably should. But that doesn't matter because the scenery around there will be done later. And I probably I'm going to put quite a lot of overhanging bushes because that's the kind of area that I'm trying to catch and model. So it's an 
nearly dried. It's been not quite 24 hours. Still a little bit white down here and here. You can see on some of these edges and we've still got this bit to do, which will be coming up in a video. So what I'm thinking of doing is just putting a little bit more on this pipe, especially going in, because I can see it doesn't go all the way back. So I'm gonna use a cocktail stick to get it in there because all my brushes are quite big. And I'm just going to get my gloss medium. And push it in now. There's an art to this and it's about being at the right angle and doing it left handed for the video is not the easiest thing. There we go. I'm not left handed, it might be quite apparent. Okay, so I've now got a bit of water coming down there, which I can see. Okay, and I'm just gonna put a bit more along here. Now, my mind is that's looking a little bit too clean. So I've got one of these lovely, um, you've seen them a lot, business cards that I use. I'm gonna put that there and I'm gonna get a, um, um, I don't know, a brown, a sort of sludgy brown. Had a bit of a gray in it, I think, but um, I think I'm actually gonna put on this, which is a wooden deck tan just a real smidgen. And this is just a Tamiya paint. I'm going to put a small amount in here and just mix it in so that this now isn't quite as um, clear as it was. And I'm not going to cover it totally with this. But what I want to do is just get some streaks coming through and down here. because it just looks too clear and we're doing a nice sludgy water effect and then it's got this beautiful clear stream coming into it. The last thing to do on my effluent sewage pipe, well maybe not the last thing, is it just needs to be tied in with a little bit more. We don't want this to be the final coat. Um, we want this to be inside and there we are. You can just feed into the rest of this so that it's, it looks like the water's miserable inside. Now getting it up in here, it's not easy. And making sure that it's underneath as well as on top so that this is all encased. Keep looking at it from every angle because your visitors will. So this is the final result on the effluent. As you can see, yep, it definitely looks a little bit yucky and it's all flowing in. The only thing I would say is I think this has just flattened out a little bit over time and yeah, I would have preferred it to be a little bit more curved, but these things happen. Um, it still looks, still looks good, still looks like a swirl of water, yucky water going in and then running down through here. So I like it. And um, let's see what the mini Cathy's think. So here's the final result of my effluent pipe. Um, the only thing I probably did wonder was, did I make it a bit too brown on the pipe coming in? And I would probably do some more splashes at the bottom in future. So with the wonders of Photoshop, I, I took my photo and I just made it slightly less brown. Hmm, I think I almost prefer it. This week, the mini cats encounter a deadly bong. And boy, does it bong. <coughs> it's like the, the ultimate that? realism. Oh. Smells on your leg. Uh, I think she meant glue it with, with me. Put it underneath or something. Uh, oh, that's just. Smell vision? What a bad idea. I mean, yes. <laughs>
steam engine and coal smells and smoke and maybe a bit of frying bacon or coffee from the diner or even sea salt for the port area but manure like why it's supposed to be a fun hobby the slogan's like model railroading is fun there's nothing fun about this smell Next week, the mini Cathy's are something a little bit more frothy. Tune in and find out what it is. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, subscribe to me on YouTube or on my website, kathymillett.co.uk. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Cathy Millett Modelling.